I don't think so. Just like a painting, you know, that stands in a in a forgotten in forgotten in a forgotten uh, in a forgotten museum, and, and if nobody looked at this painting, is this painting still what it is? Certainly, it is. If I remain in your realm there, which I do, and therefore I have a fear of moving out of this realm because I'm totally true, I totally belong there, and I can argue exactly as you do with total satisfaction. It is my life, uh, I mean, this is where my life is. But I, the moment I think of that is why I, have, I cannot even imagine any kind of communitarian exchange that I might engage in because I am totally uncertain of this this uh, moment. Uh, Ashish's example of the bridge is important. I'm not a bridge maker. And what I'm asking is everybody who enters a relationship with the community must therefore have some ability to make the bridges. And Rahul's answer in some ways seems satisfactory. But not the position from which you speak belongs to one realm. It doesn't seem to offer bridges. It speaks from one realm with total conviction to which I, with which I identify. But I don't think it is offering bridges. But sorry, I've already... No, why not? I think that the fact that, yes, I'm, I'm <coughs> the privileged person I am, whether I am in York, whether, whether, whether I, I, I am here in, in uh, Kirke village. And the question is what I do with, with these privileges. See? So, it, yes, it is my conviction that I can, I can do that bridge. I can come here and I can forget my individual whatnot. And I can, uh, as it were, submit myself to what is required of the here and now. The hick and nunc. Here and now. What is here and now? When I come here, I do not come here as somebody from somewhere else. I also come from somewhere else. But the most important is in coming here is to accept the here and now and to spend my, my day uh, walking around and, and talking to people and seeing how they live and how they do things and so on becomes my conviction, becomes part, and that is a bridge. That is a bridge. Maybe it's a great moment in, in this active space. You know, it's a great moment to have you know, uh, uh, you know, different kinds of people occupying that space. It is, you know, it is an invitation and it is also uh, you know, uh, it, it is intent you know, on Professor Zafran's part to also be part of this process. Well, if, I believe that, if I believe that, uh, that, in, that it won't happen to one single human being affect all other human beings, then it's not such a difficult thing to imagine as moving to a different context, different community, because essentially, and I think you would share it with me, that, uh, that in so far we believe that the life of every human being is part of what we are as human beings, then there can't be anything that is alien to me. I am human, therefore anything human is Part of me. <laughs> so just, I mean, it's, it's really interesting. There are many, you know, ways in which one is trying to connect with the earlier part. But just, uh, just reacting quickly, uh, because there's so much in one said. I stay with very close here. I've been living here since 1981. Uh, when this entire, uh, right across this road where you see this mall, it was, it, it was a beautiful park. We used to play here. It was a graveyard. Many, many things were here. Um, but, and I've seen Kirki, uh, as well as this road <coughs> that you're probably all going to be dealing with tomorrow morning, um, as well as the lunacy of the idea of trying to improve this road. You'll be surprised when you have reached out. Hang on, I mean, I'm, not, I'm, saying, I'm saying lunacy in a way. You know, it's been two decades of this tribe, somebody like to do, deal with this road. Three, three decades. <laughs> many have come, many have gone. Okay. Uh, now, to have a bunch of people here as weird as we yes. all are. <laughs> Joy is here. To have as ridiculous a self-belief as you all have <laughs> is something. <laughs> it is it is this absurdity of this idealistic 
nonsense if yes. you may call it, or actually this extreme vulnerability of your own idiocy, <laughs> or of your own vulnerability, or of your own passion, or of your desire to, for instance, as he said, to you know <coughs> repeatedly get in touch with yourself and repeatedly find that moment when you find a new method. You have to make sense, you have to make sense, you have to make sense. <laughs> you know? So it, I, for me, you know, what she's trying to do is not, I wouldn't even go into the bridge. I, you know, I would say that uh, that is the, the, you know, the strength is the search for that, you know, for the poesis, the search for that moment. It doesn't matter whether that moment comes later. It's, it's the absurdity of the search for me. That is the only reason why they will listen to you. I think. There is nothing else. No, but, uh, exactly, but there are also orthodoxies. The orthodoxies of thought, orthodoxies of... I mean, in the sense that if you have decided or you have decided that you know, civic space, civic action, political action, political engagement, etc. You know, is compartmentalized. That we believe that we will celebrate a triumph and belief and faith that we can speak, say, for Maoism or we can speak for Kashmir. Right? We, 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 for us, that is not uh, part of the world of lunacy, because even though we know that politically there is a hugely sort of uh, you know um, explosive space in that, but we, you know for us making that voice felt and expressing that desire yeah. is valid yeah. enough. But the moment we enter into civic space, you know, and this is where the split in the whole world of you know the, the, the abstract way in which we love to talk about politics is for for me an orthodoxy. It is an orthodoxy that needs because the lunacy exists all through. I mean, uh, to have faith in political value is lunacy. But to, 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 to sort of necessarily locate the space of civic action in a higher form of lunacy and the space of ideological, you know, and, uh, ideological politics in a lesser form, that is problematic. Because I do believe that, that we do also inherit all kinds of orthodoxies and the language of political action is highly limited. The right opinion. Yes, right. Would that also be an orthodoxy? Yes. I believe that it could. It, it, it could be. I, mean, I don't. I, mean, I, I belong yeah, yeah. there. Therefore, I think that my vulnerability would arise also in questioning this orthodoxy. Surely, I mean, because the aesthetic it, uh, orthodoxy yeah. is as authoritarian <coughs> as another kind of I, orthodoxy, I, 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 and I, I, yeah, I yeah. think that. This, yeah. this is also not. No, no, that, that I have no absolute. I'm not happy uh, sort of, you know, the, the, the authority in a sense to well, Pascal, enter that space. Pascal, yeah. who was a Catholic French philosopher, said that life is a lunacy, so the only way to uh, live with it is to become oneself a little bit on that side. To become sorry? That life mean? itself is a lunacy, so the only way to overcome it is to uh, indulge in lunacy oneself. You know. so, and in fact, if you look around, you can see that every culture is a form of collective lunacy. I mean, the kind of thing that people believe in is, is unbelievable, of course, but people believe in it. And, uh, but in the course of their life, they find ways, amazing ways to cope with this aspect. For example, you ask about violence. When you walk in the streets now, every day, you see these poor goats who are prepared for the for the slaughter. Huh? That is a way in which this particular culture is coping with the violence. With the sacrifice is a gift, it's about the gift, it's about the gift of life, which involves violence and so on. And that's what I was thinking today, walking, and we walk in the streets and we saw these, these goats, every meter says a goat, 